Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to SimTech channel. This is part two of tutorial seven on short circuit MVA calculation. So from where we left off on this circuit, we were reducing our equivalent network into a smaller network so that we can calculate the total uh, per unit impedance. So the goal here is to calculate the short circuit MVA that will develop at this point F. Now, if you are wondering, um, What's going on here? I really recommend that if this is your first time watching this tutorial, please go ahead and watch part one so that you can understand a little bit about the, the network itself and the fact that we do have reactors connected between the generators. So the importance of having them. So that's very important. So having said that, we can then go ahead and further reduce this network. So from the get go here, you can see that uh, generator B have a 0, 0,3 okay j per unit and then there is a reactor here of 0, 0,1 that's need to be combined because they are in series and the same will be done on this section here okay so that's the first thing we're going to do so moving forward so that give us so on a generator a we keep the same thing and then we've got the 0, 0,1 j per unit so that is this reactor here that is leading into generator j just to make sure that this node here is exactly the same point in the circuit there okay so that is that reactor now from this perspective we can clearly see what is the total equivalent impedance here so that will be the combination the parallel combination of uh generator b and generator c section here so that is your 0, 0,4 and your 0, 0,15 in parallel so this parallel combination will be connected with this one in series and then once you get this equivalent uh, impedance here that must then be in parallel with uh, the 0, 0,3 j per unit so that's the first thing you get the parallel network then you add it with the series reactor impedance and then the whole combination must then be calculated with the 0, 0,3 j per unit in parallel okay so Having said that, then we get to this total uh, Z per unit impedance formula. So as you can see, I've got a 0, 0,4 times 15. So this is the combination of this parallel network. Now plus the reactor J per unit there. And then the whole thing is then in parallel with the 0, 0,3 J per unit. So, so that gives me an answer of 0, 0,123 J per unit. So this one here is your total per unit impedance of this whole network. So, so that is your 0, 0,123 J per unit, like that. Okay, so now that we've got our total per unit impedance, so the next thing here, we know what we are chasing. We are actually chasing the short circuit current here. So we are following the current path here we know where the current path is taking so ic is going this direction and then it's going to combine here with your ib so that's going to be a bigger current so the two current ib and ic are going to combine here at this point and that current will cross across the uh, reactor and that will combine with ia to give us a total per unit current so we talked about it in part one now but before we chase that current i would like just to make a humble request if you watch part one of this tutorial and you find it useful please give the tutorial a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel that's the only way you can support this channel and that is really really highly appreciated okay now from here you know that we are chasing the short circuit current so we know that the short circuit current i short circuit is given by the formula i per unit okay times your I line. Now that you know the formula to find your short circuit current, you still have two unknown here. So that is your I per unit and your uh, I line. Now the I per unit, that is a given. So that is your one over Z per unit. And your I line is the one that is interesting and you have to pay attention. I line is the normal current that is flowing into the section. Okay. So in case there is no short circuit, you've got a current that is actually flowing at a section here. So that's a section where the fault is going. So that's a current that you are interested. So that is your I line. But 
what is the voltage pressure that is pushing that current that's the one thing you need to understand if you get that wrong then you're going to get the wrong eye line then your actual circuit will also be wrong so the voltage pressure that is pushing that current is the 11 kilovolt now we can see 11 kilovolt is the rated reactor voltage here that is precisely because this generator here is also giving us 11 kilovolt okay so don't make that confusion here that you might think there is another voltage level here this whole bus here is 11 kilovolt because it is connected to the output of all these parallel generators so this voltage is what you will call vb so that is your base voltage okay now moving on we can then say i per unit is one over z per unit total and that gives us one over zero comma one two three and we find a current of eight point one three amp okay so we got our per unit current now we can go ahead and find our i line as i've said before so we're using 11 kilovolt pass by voltage to get our line current so the formula for the line current is obviously your s b so new so that is your new base apparent uh power that we are using remember in part one we said that we are choosing 30 mv as our new base apparent power make sure you use that if you use a different one here then you're going to get wrong result okay so our vb zone here is the 11 kv and we have the square root of three now plotting the value we get a current of 1575 so basically 1.5 kilo amps of current so this is our line current so that's the line current that is flowing in this path here in a normal condition operating condition okay so we can then go ahead and multiply these two current to get the short circuit current at this point here so that is the total short circuit current okay so that give us 8 comma 13 times 1575.6 and that give us a current of 12.8 kilo amps so this is the total short circuit current so this here should be t4 total okay so now we know what is the total current here so we just found that current we know what is this current now so the next thing to do to solve the first question is to calculate the short circuit mva developing at that point so we're just going to use the formula okay for the i line this time with denoting a short circuit and then making the s short circuit or the m va short circuit as a subject of the formula we get this following expression and replacing the value we're getting an mva okay fault of 243.9 megavolt ampere so basically 244 mva so this is the fault level at this point in case of a short circuit you have 244 megavolt ampere of fault level developing here that is a lot of power so you need to have appropriate circuit breaker to handle that otherwise it's going to be fire all over the place okay now we can go ahead now to try to find our current okay so now that we know what is the actual total short circuit current at this point it's becoming much easier for us to start deducing what are the current being distributed the short circuit current being distributed by each one of these generator okay now to help us find those current we just need to go back into our per unit impedance equivalent diagram here that is showing us exactly what is the situation is like so we've got the total impedance on each one of these branches okay and then we've got a one isolated impedance here that basically is this reactor here okay so what is going on here we know what is this current we found this current so that is 12.8 kilo amp of current so that's the current at that point so now we can see that by current divider rule we know that if there is 12.8 here that means uh, these two here they might be taking a huge portion of the current okay that is coming at this point and then there is also a current coming from a here so 
those currents are coming and merging to the total current okay so this is becoming a little bit easy for us to solve well what do we mean it's easy it doesn't seem to be easy here because we know what's the total current but now we know that these impedances here are not the same if these impedances were the same let's say uh, the, the, the the two parallel branch here plus the 0 comma 1 if it was the same with 0 comma 3 we could have just say oh well then the current is just divided by 2 because it's equal impedances so it's not that so which means it's a little bit complicated so so to solve this mystery here we're going to use the current divider rule so that we can first solve for the current coming from the generator a now according to the current divider rule let's say if i just give an example quickly here let's say we've got two resistors connected in parallel like this okay so this is r1 and this is r2 so you're going to have i1 here and here you're going to have i2 so they are in parallel okay so they are merging here so which means here you've got what i total so the same i total is the same current that's flowing from this input side here okay now let's say we've got a load there okay just illustrating so this is our voltage source so what's happening here let's say we know i total like in our case here we know the total current okay but we don't know what is the current going on to r1 or, R, or r2 because for the simple reason here is that we have different resistors if r1 and r2 were equal knowing i total so if i total here was 10 amps okay and uh, r1 and r2 the equal resistance then we're gonna say where well, there is 5 amps there and 5 amps here simple no problem but now we've got different resistor value so to solve this mystery according to the current divider rule the formula to find first current one here because if we find current one then we can then subtract current one for i total and that will give us uh, i2 so i1 okay will be equal to i total minus i2 okay so we all agree in this formula but how do we get i1 so from the current divided rule i1 here will be equal to equivalent resistance of r2 okay so r2 whatever the resistance is in this branch okay divided by r1 resistance itself plus r2 so you see what we're doing here we're taking the resistance of r2 divided by the resistance of r1 plus the resistance of r2 times the total current okay so this formula will be the same if we want to find the, the current for r2 we're going to divide r1 by the the, the, the sum of r1 plus r2 so this is how you uh, find the current for each one of these branch in a situation like this so we're going to apply the same scenario here this is a current divider rule so now let's say this is our r1 okay so which means this whole combination here is going to be our r2 because we want to find ia okay let's not worry about uh, ib and ic let's just understand that the current coming here is ib and ic so that's a combination of these two current coming at that point so now we consider this whole section to be one equivalent resistance so let's first get the equivalent resistance of this section so that will be this parallel combination plus this series so deducing that it give us okay 0 comma 4 times 0 comma 15 uh, over 0 comma 4 plus 0 comma 15 so this give us a total resistance of 0 comma 21 for this section so now we know the total resistance of that section so we can then go ahead and apply our current divider rule since we now know what is r2 okay for this section we can then go ahead and apply the current divider rule so this current ia is this branch current that is equal to z of the other branch so that's the one we just calculated the 0 to 1 divided by the sum of z of the other branch the 0 to 1 plus z of this branch so that would be the 0 comma uh, uh, 3 so that's the same formula we just developed there so replacing the value from there 
you can see clearly we got 0 to 1, 0 comma 2 1 over uh, 0 comma 2 1 plus 0 comma 3 and times the total current. So we know what a total current is. The total current is 12.8. So this give us a current of uh, 5.274 kilo amps. Now we know that this 5.274 kilo amps is your IA. So that is the current at IA. Now that we know what's a current for IA, it's now becoming very simple. So we can just simply subtract, okay, uh, the current from IA from the total current to get the IBC. So let's go ahead and do that. So since we know that, so we can just do the total current is equal to IA plus IBC. So that is correct. So the total current here is the, the merging of this current plus this current. And from here, we can then make uh, IBC here the subject of this formula. So that will then be IBC is I total minus IA. Okay. Now, we have all the values here. We know what I total is. We just calculated IA. So we can just replace. So that is your 12.8 minus your 5. 274 kilo amps there so it give us a current of 7.52 kilo amps so that is your ibc so this is now the current at this point 7 kilo amps okay remember i told you that this current might be bigger than this current so it is the case now we know what is this current is okay so we know what this current is here so we know we know this current since we know what this current is now it is going to be now very simple for us to calculate both this current here because we know that this current we just found is actually the combination of both of those current. So to get IB and IC, we're going to apply the same current divider rule here. So we're going to say now to get IB, okay, we're going to say since now this is IB, okay, IB is from this branch here. So we know what is the impedance of IB. Look there. It's 0, 0,4. Okay. So the impedance of the other branch is the 0, 0,15. Following our formula here. So it's 0, 0,15 over 0, 0,15 plus 0, 0,4 times IBC. Remember now IBC now here is now the total current for the two of them. Okay. So it's the same method we used to find this IA. This time around, the total current is now IBC is no longer that one day. Okay, so we then go ahead and find IBC to be equal to 2.051 kilo amps. Okay, now this is now becoming a simple mathematics here. Okay, now that we've got IB, we can then just go ahead and subtract it from IBC to get our uh, IC day. Okay, so that's the only thing we can do. We can then subscribe IB from IBC to get IC. But equally, we can still use the voltage divider formula. That is going to give us exactly the same result as you see here. So our IC is equal to 5.47 kilo amps. Okay, so as you can see, this is just a simple current divider method. But before you can get here, there is obviously a lot of things that you have to accomplish, you have to understand, and you have to get everything exactly correct in order to get to these correct answers. So this is it for this tutorial. Guys, if you've learned something in this tutorial, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That would be highly appreciated. Until next time, stay tuned for more per unit uh, short circuit calculation tutorial like this. Cheers.